What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, I'm also going to be giving you all my opinion on whether or not I think Tesla stock could get back to 300 60 bucks and I also want to break down Apple in particular being at all-time highs they actually hit an all-time high today and whether or not I think there's still juice left in Apple stock so before we get into that all I ask from you is to simply hit that like button if you enjoy the video consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community the discord group chat link is down below as well as the Facebook group so let's get started here with the S&P 500. It was up 20 eight dollars and 48 cents here today guys 0.91 percent to be exact ended up closing at three thousand one hundred and forty five dollars and you can see we almost hit that all-time high all-time highs at 31.54 if we zoom in a bit we hit 31.50 so we were four points off of that all-time high but nonetheless very strong performance today in the S&P 500 so looking back this ended up being a juicy dip by for the markets, right? And like we've been talking about over these past couple of months at this point, since the market has been running, every time it seems like it pulls down, ultimately it reverses and it proves to be a dip buy. And this was another one of those times. So I'm interested in seeing this upcoming week. Are we going to gap up above 3154? Maybe even in Sunday night's futures market session, you know, are we going to run up on Monday, Tuesday, maybe hit an all-time high, maybe even go even higher? That's kind of what I'm looking for at this point in time. Based on the trajectory, kind of the momentum, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another green day on Monday, maybe on Tuesday as well, getting us again to that all-time high level. And from there, we may see another one of these retracements to get us to a healthy spot because at that point, it's going to be about four, five, six days of green. RSI will be overbought. We'll need a pullback anyway. So that's kind of what I'm thinking um, in the S&P today. Still some juice in the tank. You guys can see the four-hour chart. We're not quite overbought on the RSI, so we can probably see again that all-time high, a new all-time high in this upcoming week, in my opinion. Going over here to the Dow Jones, we're not as close to that all-time high, but we're a stone's throw away way, right? We're about right there, you know, about half a percent, I'd say at this point, away from that all-time high, being at 28100 um, which is the all-time high. Now we're at about $28,000 flat. And just like the S&P, this proved to be a dip buy. We've broken above moving averages. Everything's looking good. We are a bit overbought here on the hourly chart. But if we go back to that four-hour chart, you can see we're in the middle of the RSI. There is a bit more juice left in in the tank, so I wouldn't be surprised if this were to hit all-time highs in this upcoming week. Again, maybe on Monday, maybe on Tuesday, and who knows, maybe in the Sunday market, um, futures market, we get to see an all-time high if we get a massive gap up. So, very strong day. Oh, I don't, I don't even think I mentioned how much it was up. 337 points, guys, it was up today. Up over 1%. So, the Dow Jones did a lot better than the S&P. Up 1.22% today, which is pretty incredible. The NASDAQ was up 1.15%, up almost 100 points today, up $95.75 to be exact. And this proved to be a beautiful dip by we held that 180 SMA now we broke above the EMA and that 50 SMA and we're a stone's throw away from that all-time high at around 84 58 here on the NASDAQ futures and the RSI is not too overbought so we probably could get there next week um, with one or two more green days in my opinion and again with the momentum with what everything's looking like right now in the short term I definitely see could see 
this as well as the S&P and the Dow going to all-time highs. So that's kind of the rundown of what happened today in the markets, guys. Let me know down below. And this was mostly fueled by a solid um, jobs performance report. So that is really what boosted this up, as you guys saw. Um, or maybe you didn't see it in this video because I didn't show it yet, but you, brought, you probably saw it on your own. A lot of the move came in the morning, right, from the gap up. And then we kind of coasted the rest of the day. We opened up at around, I guess you can say 3135, and 15 points is what we ran for the rest of the day, which is pretty good, honestly. But most of the gap up came, you know, uh, most of the green came from that gap up from close yesterday to the open today. So that's kind of what the market breakdown is for today's video. Again, let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on that. And let's talk talk about what I personally did today in today's session. So Tesla stock is one that I'm currently swing trading. I did not add more to it quite yet, but figured I'd let you guys know that I'm interested in adding more to it if we break the $340 level, which kind of leads me to talk about what you saw in the title, Tesla stock to 360. So if we break 340, which goes back to where I want to add more money, this level right here, 340 bucks, as you can see from this trend line, that's extremely bullish in my opinion. At that point, we could potentially run up to 350 bucks, which is that next level of resistance here on Tesla, right? So from 340 up to 350, which would be my target, one of my targets, that's 2.75%. And in the title, you saw 360, which ultimately I think it will get there and even even higher, we can see that is around a 5 to a 6% potential for profit. So we got a price target raise on Tesla stock yesterday to 500 bucks. I don't really know how much that fluctuated the stock today, if it did at all, but we were up $5.52, up 1.67% today, which is good because if you recall from yesterday's video, I was talking about how I held onto my Tesla position just just because it held 330 and the fact that we gapped up today and continued to run up from that 330 resistance or support hold rather that's a good sign for me because obviously I don't want it to break 330 because I'd lose money because my average cost right now is around 332 on Tesla 333 something like that so ideally again I'm looking to add more at 340 and I really do see it going right back up to 360 especially if we break these resistance levels and the sentiment around Tesla has been quite positive right ever since that last earnings report we've been straight shooting the only or straight shooting up right the only reason why it's fallen is because of that cyber truck release and it seems like the stock is sort of forgetting about that release because initially they didn't like it the, the masses a lot of people thought it was ugly but then Elon started to tweet out um, how many people signed up last I remember it's 250,000 or something like that, right? And ever since then, it's slowly been plateauing here and reversing back up. So I'm thinking people are slowly starting to buy back in. The buying pressure is starting to come back in here in Tesla. And again, ever since that earnings report, we've been flying up. We have Shanghai factory starting to do, um, you know, some prep deliveries, things like that, that are definitely going to impact, you know, future Future quarters reports here and honestly if we get some good earnings from Tesla here over the next couple of quarters I think we'll blow past 360 obviously at that point in time into the 400s and so forth right but that's kind of what I'm thinking now on Tesla and another thing I did today was trade degas and like I mentioned in yesterday's video the report that we saw from natural gas wasn't the best coupled with the mild weather that we've been experiencing and and the downtrend in natural gas, NGF20, if we pull it up, right, all of these different things really 
put together like a puzzle. Remember, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, this led me to trade DGAS, right? Overall, the trend, if we go on the hourly chart on natural gas, has been down. We've been struggling to break out of that moving average resistance. So why would I trade you guys if we're not showing the technical break? As long as we're trading below this level, that's where I'm interested in trading DGAS, right? So we got the dump this morning heading into the market for natural gas which really set it up beautifully for the entire day on d gas so you really theoretically here you could have made money no matter what point in time you bought d gas today because it went up really the whole entire day so as i saw again natural gas dumping at that point in time pre-market heading up into the market open we saw the big gap up on d gas right massive gap up that showed me how bullish d gas was was then we pulled down held that 180 SMA at a higher low and continued to run up there and pretty much guys I just got in on the pull down I think it was this pull down um, I added uh, maybe it was up up a little bit more here at about 145 ish I think I was buying into it uh, maybe 145 50 started to buy in then ultimately I ended up selling my position I believe close to 150 as we started to get back up to that resistance from pre-market um, that's where I started scaling out. So ultimately, I was in it for about an hour, hour and a half tops um, in terms of my trade. And I made a pretty good chunk here today, guys. Made close to 4% from about 145 up to about 150. And that is really good for me. That's really, really good for me. I'm aiming for, you know, 1% to 2% on my trades, you know, on my day trades. Um, swing trades, maybe 4 or 5%, depending on how long I'm holding them. So 3 4% on a day trade um, for about, you know, uh, for more like 4 or 5% for about an hour and a half of holding it. That's not bad, right? So that's what I ended up doing um, in today's session. And I'd love to know what you guys did. Let me know down below in the comments section. So that's going to lead me into a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming week and kind of talking about Apple in specific here. So let's pull up Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. This is one of those stocks that seems like it cannot stop. It has not stopped over the past couple of months. It's just been running up with minimal, minimal pull downs, which is insane, right? From 170 up to 270 guys in the matter of five, six months here, seven-ish months. That's crazy. That's a gain of about 55% in the stock. And we got a pull down actually a couple of days ago down to about 256. So if you were interested in and buying a dip on Apple, that was your moment. But at this moment, you are probably out of luck. This is one that I'm not looking to chase me personally. Again, I want to give you all my opinion on this. I'm not looking to chase Apple here. I know a bunch of people, especially beginners, they might look at Apple and get a case of FOMO here, fear of missing out because it's going up, it's going up. It seems like it's not stopping, right? But at these levels, you have to understand and ask yourself is this a stock right now that offers the most amount of value out there and the truth is it doesn't if you were looking to buy into apple these were the times to do it during the weakness right you know from this 212 sell off down to 170 this was a good time to buy even this pull down down to 188 you know from 220 this was another good time to buy even here like i mentioned a couple of days ago that was a nice retracement of about five six percent that might have been a good time to buy if you want to swing trade. But now, really, if you buy this, you're telling yourself that this thing's going to continue to hit all-time highs. That's what you're telling yourself, right? And it's already overbought. So how much could you really make if this thing continued to run? Maybe another 2%, another 3%. But in my opinion, I think it'd be smarter here to let it cool off a bit. Let it maybe go to 275, whatever. You miss out on that little gain. But if it pulls back down to let's say 
260, 255, that could be a point in time where you enter, but that takes patience, and that's something that a lot of beginners don't have at the end of the day. And again, people get in at the top when they get FOMO, expecting it to continue to go up, and then they get absolutely smoked. So that's kind of a little um, talk about Apple here. I love the stock, right? I love the stock. If you guys remember last year, if you've been following me for that long, drop a comment, by the way, if you've been following me for over a year, let me know down below in the comments. I'd like to know how many of you guys have been. But a year ago, I was buying Apple a lot in the 170 uh, range all the way down to the 140 range when we saw that massive correction. That was obviously an amazing point in time to buy because those shares are up 60, 70, 80 percent at this point, which is fantastic, right? But again, now you have to ask yourself, is there other or rather are there other places to put money that could have a better return? I personally think there are at this moment in time, and that's not discrediting ad uh, Apple as a great stock um, because it's an amazing stock. But again, even though it's an amazing stock, doesn't mean it's an amazing value to buy right now. So let's talk about UGAS and DGAS very quickly. Again, like I briefly touched on a couple of minutes ago, natural gas really just continued its downtrend today. If we go to NGF20, you guys can see it. We got rejected by that 180 SMA dump down. Now it seems like we're going for that lower low to continue the downtrend. So DGAS from here still has more upside in in my opinion, like I've been mentioning over the past couple of days, guys, really the narrative hasn't quite yet changed. And that's kind of what I'm sticking to here in the short term before potentially seeing that natural gas rally that I do see coming here over the next couple of weeks. But we just have to wait when that's going to come for when it's going to come to then switch over to you guys. So today we broke 150. Now we have a huge room to run, um, huge room to run, in my opinion, up to about 170. 70 bucks, which is that previous resistance. And if natural gas does get that lower low, pushes for that lower low, I think D gas will have no problem filling this gap. So that could be a potential trade um, this upcoming Monday. Heading into Tuesday, another stock I want to talk about is Johnson and Johnson here, guys. This is a stock that's been crushing it. Over the past literally 10, 15 days, this stock's gone from 130 to 140. That's a gain of of 8%. So this thing is rallying, right? And we broke 140 today, which is actually that level of resistance that I was hoping we would break before we get to about 142. So this is an extremely bullish move where if we pull down, which it seems like we're already doing, but if we hold 140 this week, we could potentially rally back up to 142, giving us that 2% margin of profit on J&J. &J. And of course, if we see the next level, which is 145, that could give us 3% of profit from 140 up to 145. So I'm loving Johnson & Johnson here, guys. This is one that I was actually buying pretty heavily in my long-term portfolio through this month right here, through these couple of months. And if you've guys seen my M1 Finance portfolio, which is linked down below in the description box, you'll see that I've been buying Johnson & Johnson. So that's one that I'm watching. At V is another Another one ticker symbol ATVI did pretty decent today 22 cents in the green up 0.4 percent now we're looking to break 55 before filling that gap up to 56 so that's kind of where I see the potential now that's about a 1.4 percent but where I see the most potential is if we break 57 bucks like I've been mentioning in these videos you can see from 56 there's a big margin of profit up to about 63 bucks that is an 11 to 12 percent potential right there so those are pretty much all the stocks that i want to cover in today's video without making it too long i hope you all did fantastic out there if you did let me know how you did this week in terms of trading let me know what your plans are over the next couple of weeks in the stock market i'd love to know if you guys enjoyed this video hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and don't forget webull is running a promotion right now where 
if you sign up using my link down below, you'll get two free stocks valued up to 1400 bucks by simply depositing 100 bucks. And that actually ends, I believe, the end of December. So get on that if you guys do want to get those two free stocks up to 1400 bucks. That link is down below. Same with the Strive Smart Discord and same with the Strive Smart Facebook group. So I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Thanks again for watching and staying to the end. You are awesome. Peace out.